happy girl. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another podcast of Women at the Well Ministries, where we believe that all of us have to come to Jesus like the woman at the well in John chapter 4. Our highest priority is making God real in your life. Whether you are listening in our app, in your favorite podcasting app, or on our website at watwm.org, we invite you to sit down with us as we look to the scriptures to learn more about God and to strengthen your daily walk with Jesus Christ. Living life for Christ, she's a happy girl. You need to remember that God is the person we need to please. You must live your life according to his principles and follow his commandments. The world may not understand and may even chastise or ridicule you, but that doesn't really matter. It is God you must strive to please. God, not man. Join us in this program, God is the Supreme Authority, as Kim Miller of Woman at the Well Ministries takes us through Acts 5.29, which says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Hello and welcome to this broadcast of Women at the Well Ministries. Let us pray. Our kind and most gracious to Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray that you would open our hearts and our minds right now, Lord, that we would understand exactly who you are. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would strengthen our our faith. I pray that you would allow us to place more trust in you that you would just encourage us, dear Heavenly Father, to understand that it really is you who we need to please. Lord, give us that understanding, that working understanding of knowing that man can't harm our soul and that our life is but a vapor. And regardless of that ridicule, regardless of, of what it is that would cause us not to stand strong for you, Lord, that you would help us to be able to push those fears aside and to stand strong in a dark world that our light would shine and that you would be glorified. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would use each of us in such a way that we would have no faults to stray because of what somebody might influence us with or something somebody might say. But at this moment, Lord, Open our hearts and open our minds that we would have a very clear view of who you are, the authority that you are, and our need to follow your commandments. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of an angry God. And the Bible tells us that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun, and that there's a day of judgment. And for those of us who have given our heart to the Lord, there'll be now no more condemnation for us. And our works will be judged and those things that we have done for the Lord will come out like silver and gold and be refined and pure. But the things that we've done for ourselves or the work that we've done here that has glorified the devil will certainly burn as hay and stubble. But our salvation is sure. This life that we live is really not a life that we live just to ourselves. The people around us are affected by our decisions, our behaviors, the things we do, the things we don't do. And our life is a reflection of what our true belief in God is. And you can talk about how much you love the Lord till the cows come home or you turn blue in the face. But if you have nothing in your life to show that you love the Lord and no one can tell you apart from a, 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 a sinner who is proclaiming their sins, then there's a problem. And for many of us, the thing that keeps us from having a bright light, the sh- shade we put over our light and our lamp is our fear of what the people around us are going to say or do if we should glorify God. It's a crazy thing that all of us fall into. 
many of us have opportunity week after week after week to stand up and just say something for the Lord in our church. And you can find a million reasons why you're not going to do that. For me, I use the same one every week. Well, I have the opportunity to be on the radio and I have the opportunity to work in the assisted living home. And really, it should be somebody else who says something. I I don't want to take up time from them. When the reality of it is, if the Lord has put something on my heart, that means somebody there, believe it or not, must need to hear it. And when I don't do that, I haven't hurt anyone but myself. I've let the Lord down and somebody walked away not getting the blessing that perhaps they could have gotten if I'd have just spoken what God put on my heart. Now, we don't need to get up and just speak to be speaking. But if the Lord gives us something to say, we need to get up, say it, and then sit back down. But we don't because we're afraid what somebody might say. Well, goodness gracious, there she goes. She thinks she's all that in a bag of chips. And I guess she's got something to say again. And or you have somebody who, who testifies often and you you just start thinking you stop listening. That's all the devil, because there should never be a time that our lips don't sing his praises. There should never be a time that our lips don't testify to the wonders of God and his miracles and the way that he takes care of each of us. And then there's the things we do, perhaps in our everyday life. Like maybe you meet somebody in the store and you go to church with them, but you haven't seen them for a little while and you have a conversation with them and they tell us that They've been sick. And they say to you, will you pray for me? And there's this little thing comes across your mind and heart that says, well, we should probably just pray right now. And you look around and there's 4,500 people around you, it seems like, and there may only be four or five. And you're like, well, this is a business establishment. And I'm, okay, I will pray for you. Well, a couple things just happens right there. One, if the Lord puts a prayer on your heart, you need to pray. He wants to talk to you. And you need to talk to him. Two, you could have been an amazing blessing to that person as they saw you be that concerned about them to spend your time with the father about them. And you might have been an amazing encouragement or blessing, but that's down the tubes now because you're afraid somebody might say something to you. And then, yes, all those people that you thought were looking, the four or five or 4,500 or whatever you think it is, all missed an opportunity to see what somebody does who God has been so real to them that they just want to have a talk with Jesus. Because you see, in that same instance, you weren't at all worried about what anyone would say for you to stop and talk to that friend of yours you hadn't seen in a while. We do it all the time. But to stop in the store and talk to Jesus, the greatest friend you'll ever have, that kicks some of our socks off. We, we just wouldn't do it. Then there's the other problem. You just told that person you would pray for them. Time has gone by. You forgot to write it down. You forget about seeing them. And chances are, you forget about praying for them. And that whole opportunity that you could have had to call upon all of heaven for that friend's need is gone until you meet him again and perhaps the same circle happens. You see, man can't harm your soul. Man has no eternal consequences on you, but God does. God didn't put you in that store at the very same time that person was in that store and tug on your heart's strings to pray for them, for you just to say, no, Lord, you died for me and You supply my every need and you strengthen me and you watch over me and you're not even ashamed of me when I do the same dumb stuff all the time and you still answer my prayers, but I'm not praying in public. Or what about being seen, you know, in church or going to church? You know, maybe you have friends or coworkers who don't go to church, so you just simply don't talk about it. 
But you'll talk about the ball game you saw last night or the or the sports event you went to a couple of days ago, and I have nothing against sports. If you knew me, you would know that that would just be blasphemy for me to say that. I love sports. I think that's an amazing thing God allows us to enjoy. But it's entertainment. It can be idle time. But we have no problems talking about that. But you go to a great church service, and you sit at the lunch table, and how many of you would dare say, you know, last night I really got a real blessing going to church. I I just felt so much better after I left. And you're right. You have to be a little careful maybe in how you say it because you don't want to turn them off and you don't want to freak them out. But you want them to want to come where you are that they might hear the word of God that they too might have a personal relationship with him. But if you never talk about how wonderful it is to know the Lord, how great it is to have him as a personal friend, how amazing it is to be with fellow believers and hear all that God has done with him and to amazing concerts that you hear with the the songs uplift you and the grace and the mercy that just flows at church. If you never talk about that, why would a non-church going person really ever want to go? Why would they? You see, what we have is too precious to keep to ourselves. What God has given us It's too amazing to let those people that we love not have it. This is a real deal, people. They either are going to go to heaven or they're going to go to hell. There are no other stops on this journey. What are the other? And if you understand who God is and the way he takes care of you, he's more than fire insurance. He's more than me just getting out of hell. He's the way I get through every day. He's my best friend. He's my confidant. He's my guide. He's my comforter. He's my wisdom. And he's my knowledge. That's all stuff I need every day. And I guarantee you that everybody that you know needs it too. And we can't let what we're afraid of, of somebody saying to us, keep us from letting those we love, those we know, know that there is a risen Savior that cares about them, that loves them, and that there's a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. And unless they love the Lord, they're never going to find heaven as their home. But he's calling to all of them. It's time we just got over ourselves and in love with Jesus. Thank you for joining us in today's podcast. You can visit the show notes for quotes from today's podcast and scripture references. We pray today has been a blessing and we encourage you to reach out to us through our app, our website, or our Facebook page. You can find our app by searching for Woman at the Well Ministries in your app store or through our website at watwm.org. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash watwm. If you visit our website, you'll be able to subscribe to Bible Bits, a daily devotion written by Kim and delivered Monday through Friday by text message. Woman of the Well Ministries is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving our Heavenly Father, and it is through your loving and generous support that our ministry continues to bless others. To learn how to partner with Woman at the Well Ministries, please visit our website. Thank you to the Gospel Group Fudge Creek for letting us use their hit song, Happy Girl. We greatly appreciate your prayers. We are praying daily for our listeners. Remember that God loves you. You are loved. Happy girl, she's a happy girl, she's a happy girl, living a life for Christ, she's a happy girl.
girl.